Hello my friends, today I'm doing another report and guide on uh, overclocking GTX 980 today. So <clears throat> first let me introduce you to the model that I'm using. I've come to like these. Um, it's iChill from Eno 3D Airbus model and I'll show you why I like it so much. They actually have a very special cooling solution. Uh, they use these special um, heat spreader to take the temperature, to take the heat uh, from the memory and VRMs and uh, dissipate it towards the top where it's cooled by this little fan. And the main heat sink is cooling GPU only. So that is quite interesting and it really works. I mean, look at some of my benchmarking videos where you can see the temperature. But yeah, enough of that. I'll show you what I was able to achieve. It took me only about half an hour to do this, so it's not an extreme overclock, but I'll tell you why I haven't gone extreme on this one. There is a reason for it. It has to do with the power can, with the power limits. So yeah, <clears throat> those are the base clocks. I've just applied my overclock and yeah, so there we go. Uh, it went up to 1428 on the base and it actually boosted above 1600. Uh, six, it, it actually uh, peaked at 1630. So it was actually the first time I was a ever able to overclock uh, to 1.6 gigahertz. So yeah, <clears throat> once I overclocked it to this uh, stage, I actually have some problem with the power levels. It only goes up to 115. Uh, there are some special models like uh, EVGA Skimping and uh, Hall of Fame from KFA2, also known as Galax. So those cards have access to more power, but uh, I've uh, noticed that once I was going really, really high, even though I can still uh, tweak the core voltage and uh, go higher, even, even with this setting, uh, core wasn't boosting very well and before about 150 it was fine uh, the power consumption was lower and it was boosting just fine but when i hit 200 or around 200 boost didn't work so well at all so there's that to keep in mind but the price difference between the this card and like hall of fame or even kingpin is just crazy so it's not worth it for that little extra bit. Right, so now next step is if you don't know how to do it, I will tell you now. This is for the beginners, uh, but I will also use the core voltage tweakers so it's like an advanced kind of guide. So all the software that I'm using for this, as always, is available to download for free and I am using two, that is Afterburner and Unigine Heaven Benchmark. To make things interesting, as always, you can use any of the other benchmarks that will show you FPS, uh, just to take a reading before you start overclocking and uh, write it down. And uh, after you've done your overclock, you can do it again, just to verify how much power, how much extra power you actually squeezed out of your GPU. So what we do is we set it up to very high, uh, untick full screen so that it runs in windowed mode and um, run the benchmark to load your GPU. With Alt tab bring up the afterburner and <coughs> excuse me and four things that I like to have monitoring is core clock, memory clock, GPU temperature and power level. To set this up, you go into settings, monitoring, and uh, you move these values up to the top and put ticks next to it. So if it looks at the, like that, hit OK, and they're going to be here at the top. There's also uh, more at the bottom, but I do it like that so it's easy to monitor. So basically, once your GPU is uh, under load, uh, what we what we need to monitor is basically temperature. If you are overclocking a reference 
uh, card, then definitely you want to have a look at the temperature. Uh, with any non-reference class, you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, main thing is uh, power level. But as I said, uh, some like you know not <laughs> not very high power level uh, increase. So. I found out that with GTX 970s and 980s you can just go all the way up, it's not gonna cause any trouble at all. And uh, the next thing I've done is I uh, increased the memory clock. So if, um, if you're not sure, if you don't want to cause a lot of trouble, you can start by increasing it uh, in increments of 40 or 50. But I'll tell you now, you've seen it, it went up all the way to 565 this time. It's a bit less than I had on GTX 970. But you never know, you never know. So I suggest you spend a little bit more time, but make sure that you're doing it the right way. So in increments of 40, for example, you hit apply and then you watch this image for any signs of instability. It would be like uh, drivers, driver can crash and the screen can go blank. It means that it's uh, unstable overclock or any kind of distortions in the graphics, colors, textures disappearing, um, any like dark spots and whatnot. So fan speed, leave it on auto unless you are running um, a reference card, as I said, then you may use uh, user to find settings and um, change the RPMs of your fan. So yeah, and step by step, adding about 40 or 50, step by step, you climb a little further with every step. And once you hit that wall uh, of unstable overclock with the memory clock, you go one step back to the setting that you had before. So for example, I had 565, but um, to be honest with you, uh, with, the, with the GM204 GPU for, for the Maxwell, uh, memory clock is not so much important so for from 565 I actually brought it down to 500 and um, I started overclocking the core and on the core on this GPU I was able to get uh, just a moment just to compare my notes real quick yeah so I was able to get to 180 on the core and 500 on the memory before I ran into any instability whatsoever so th this is this was pretty high uh, I guess I guess I was lucky with this chip so once I hit that wall at 185 I could not apply this and not have it crash so once you hit that wall, you can either <clears throat> be satisfied with the, with what you have, or you can go further and increase the core voltage to about 10, hit apply, and then once, um, yeah, if, if, if the driver crashes, if the benchmark crashes, obviously you, you quit, then you increase the voltage, then you increase the core again, apply it and run the benchmark then and see if it um, if it uh, is okay that time if it's not okay and you want to try it a bit further you can increase the core voltage to f by another five or by another ten and hit apply do the same again if it doesn't work then you can go even higher it's not gonna cause any any problems this is pretty safe uh, there this program will not allow you to go extreme on the core voltage overclocking so you should not be uh, concerned about damaging any of your components unless unless you have like a really crappy power supply so yeah with a decent power supply you don't have to worry about this and um yeah so that is about it 
I haven't done extreme overclock for the reasons that I've just told you about the power consumption. And uh, here, as you can see, 1.6 gigahertz. Pretty sweet increase. If you are interested in uh, seeing how it uh, affects how it affects the games uh, frames per second in the games, I will include the link in the description below, um, so that there's there's benchmarks side by side comparison that I've done, so you can check it out. I will leave the link, and uh, that is it for this uh, for this episode. So yeah, let me know. Are you going to overclock your 980? Or did you get a 970? And how high could how high did you go? I'm interested to know like what are the other people's uh, overclocking settings. So let me know in the comments below and um, I'll see you next time.